Well, good morning everyone and welcome back. Bit of an exciting day. Bri's coming out soon. She can't be too far away. Uh, we're gonna have a look at some nestrous cows, which means they're not cycling and there's a couple that have got irregular heat. So I've pulled them out, I've drafted them. There's, well, there was 17 on my list and somehow I've only got 16, but that's all right. There's three in this paddock, I need to get out of there soon. Which means there is 13 in here, and this is from the older group, whereas those other three are from the young group, which is actually pretty good, three out of about 100, about 3%. Maybe it might be 120, so maybe a little bit less than 3%, but last year I pulled out 22, so I've got a few less this year, which is good. Uh, and out of those 22, 21 got in calf, so I think it's definitely worth it from those results. Great timing. Great timing. 16. 16? Yeah, not Love too it. bad, eh? This is the exact same, I was going to call it a probe, but it's not really a probe, it's a uh, probe. Alright, probe as uh, when we pregnancy scan. And an offset. This one was actually done last year. Oh, repeat offender. But I feel like she will come on. She's only like five days uh, since it's picked her up as an estrus. So maybe time would have got her. She's had a, she's had a few days. Easy. Yeah. She's had a silent heat. She's got a great big follicle through there. Oh, so she, she has had a heat. That is first, probably her first one, which is silent usually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but she's got a, she's got a nice CL there and she's got a great big follicle through the side. That's easy. She's got a CL cyst. That's why she's not cyclic. Oh, beautiful. Basically, that cyst is telling her she's pregnant. So she's not going to ovulate? No. And it, it, it's the, this is what blows me away, is that just the PG shot will fix it. Yeah. Really quickly. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the easiest problems to cure, let's put it that way. Yeah. So this is one that's got a regular heat. I'll chuck the graph up here and this is what it looks like. So it's just really spiky. The green lights, the green lines, the heat intensity. So it's all over the place. Uh, whereas this one here from another cow, this is what it should like. Nice high green peaks every sort of 21 days. She does have a CL, but she has no follicle. So if we dissolve it, not much is gonna happen. Oh yeah. Um, so up to you whether you wanna off sync or seed her. What would you do? Cedar's is always going to give you your best response and because she's a regular that cedar insert is going to stop her from doing anything weird in the next week because it's essentially a full reset of the system. Oh yeah. So that's probably your best, I mean it's always your best chance. Oh we'll just success. do it over here. Yeah. At the moment we can dissolve that CL but she's got no follicle there to, to ovulate so. So she, um, she was actually empty as a two year old and it carried her over. She got in calf last year, would that have anything to do with why she might be, might have been empty? Not now. Uh, it's, it's hard to say, there's a lot of sort of factors that, that go into that. Um, whether she has something different going on with like her estrogen surges and that kind of thing, because all of that heat behaviour is related to estrogen, oh, yeah. estrogen surge. Whether she does just have an unusual cycle, it's a little hard to... Pinpoint. Hard to say. Yeah, yeah. no, fair enough. Do you do much of this? Yeah, quite a bit of this. Is it more now with people with like collar or wearables? Yeah. Yeah, certainly wearables sort of, they highlight a lot more like truly how many non sites would you be quite confident in that decision. Yes. Um, but as well, like I think there's sort of a general industry move to reducing cow wastage and that kind of thing and improving our efficiency. The herd has non-cyclists, right? Like, you're never going to have a herd without non-cyclists. No, nah, exactly. That's just the way the world works. So I think we're moving towards, instead of just letting them do, do what they can, we're sort of trying to give them a bit more of a chance, I guess. And that's, oh, well, I think like, Everything pretty much finished calving about a month before we're going to start mating. And I think that like period's crucial. The more time you can have of your cows calved, the like more chance that they are going to have the cycle 
which hopefully means there's going to be less of this or these come up. What are you doing mating this year to affect your whole season next year? That's the last of that mob done, all the cows that were in the yard there. I've been writing down the things. Uh, so they have pretty much all had, uh, oh there's been three PGs, two cedars, uh, and that must mean there's been three, six, eight off sinks. Which is pretty good, I think less cedars the better, like we don't want too many of them. We did three last year, so it's about on par with only three to go. And the ones that get the PG, they'll actually come on in the next couple of days, is that how it works? Yeah. Yep. So they usually come on between two and six days post jab. jab. Which is perfect because we start mating in two days time, so they'll come on yep. within the first week. And that's why we booked, uh, well I rang Briar up about a month ago and, and we sort of yeah, arranged for it to come out now, right before we start. Oh, I think last year I did it in the first week. But it's easy to do it before you start mating, or it's best to do it before you start mating. Yeah, it depends whether you're doing, like if you're doing a cedar program or something as well, because it's seven days before they'll come up for AI. And if you're just doing blanket cedars, um, started a week out from the plan, start a mating. Yeah. And they'll just come on bang on day one. But bang on day one, it'll be a big day one. Day, but they'll all come on the week before you're supposed to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or I haven't shut my cows away, so they'll just go straight down, join them. Oh, don't go down there. Yeah, that's it. Big CL, but no follicles. So we might see to her as well. Ah. Because again, like we'll dissolve that CL, but there's nothing there for her to ovulate. Yeah. So she's not going to get in calf off that, so we might as well... So the whole... Particularly if she's, she's a young cow, and since she's been being a regular, this will hopefully sort of... All right. Reset everything and get her on a good sort of roll. Uh, awesome. Yeah, regular heaps again that one. Carved 82 days ago. She still hasn't had her first heat post, but she does have a great big Easy as that. So most of them were off sync. Three, three cedars, same as last year, and most of them were off sync. Awesome. I think we did three PGs. Three PGs, yep. So that's good. It means your collars are picking up. Non cyclers, cows that haven't had their first heat post, but they're all got ovaries that are starting to make them look pretty good. So they, they might come on heat at some point during our mating period, but it's just when? Yes, pretty much. Because we could leave them, we could say, well, look, the ovary's doing something, we'll leave it, but you never know how long it's going to take her to do something with that. Yeah. And cows have um, follicular waves. So just because they're growing a follicle there doesn't mean they're going to ovulate that one. So most cows will have either two or three waves every cycle. Oh, yeah. So they grow all the way up and then they go, oh, no, I'm not going to ovulate that one, basically. Oh, Rhythm. true. It lasts about seven days, which is why most cows are sort of in that 18 to 24 days. Oh, yeah, yeah. For being on heat, yeah. So, yeah, they could, they could come on... They could in another on. six weeks and uh, you know two more cycles mm. so then they're out of the ai window bulls would get them or they might come on after after we take the bulls out at the end exactly yes you never know the longer you wait with non-cyclers the less non-cyclers you treat but the less return on your investment you get yeah yeah so that's one of the things about doing it now is that we're getting say if they had waited another um six weeks you know, we're getting six more weeks worth of milk if, uh, if we can get them in calf earlier, potentially. You never know when they're going to come on, but yeah. As you said, best investment yes. now. Yes, your return on investment. Yeah, best milk. return on investment now. That's awesome to get that done. That is the first step. I always think it's interesting to see why they're not coming on heat or why they're having irregular heats and, and see how you can fix them or see what they need to fix them. Uh, but like I said, that's the first step. So Briar's coming back in a week's time. She's coming next Tuesday and she's going to give all the cows that got the off sink and the cedar a second jab and also pull the cedars out. So that should make them come on heat in the next 48 hours after that. And if they haven't, they get a, a shot of PG um, 48 hours that afternoon, so two days later in the afternoon. And then anything that uh, hasn't come on heat will get that blanket uh, insemination the next day. So all these cows should be inseminated within the next week or there or thereabouts. Just put the sprayer on, ready to 
Go. We've got to get our maize in. And first we've got to spray it out, making silage off all the maize ground this year. And it's not a bad day today. It hasn't rained, but then it's very windy, so it won't be today. I actually need to ring up and see, see when we'll be able to go. Trouble is, I don't really want to spray it and then it turn wet, having it sort of dead in the paddock for a week. But I think it should probably be right. If we can just get in there and spray it, surely we're going to be able to make silage in the next week to 10 days. It's got to be a fine spell at some point. However, my next job for today is that I actually have a shed inspection this afternoon. That means Kim from Qcons is coming out and she is just going to do a bit of a, an audit through here. Uh, like the plants and also my books, although they've made it a little bit easier this year because we can pre-populate most of our data, like all our herd records are online and so are our fertiliser records, they can sort of, I don't think they're going to get too involved in that. It's just making sure all the book works up to scratch, uh, all the drugs, etc. So hopefully it's a little bit quicker. It usually takes oh, sort of like maybe an hour and a half. I think she's coming at 2.30. But it'd be good to get that knocked out and out of the way. Usually I do them after Christmas in the sort of new year or the second half of the season, but I don't know, Fonterra just booked it in. Uh, well, actually they booked it in a couple of weeks ago, but I was away, so I've changed it. Or I changed it to today. So hopefully it goes all right. I haven't done it this early before in the season, but you know, I don't know, my book works sweet, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, all done. Took almost a couple of hours, but got there in the end and, and actually passed, which is good. It was actually quite handy doing it early in the season compared to later on. But I do have to sort something out or I've got to send it to Kim next week just to confirm it and then yeah, all done. Now it's on to calf club time. Who's your calf, Frankie? Buckley Unicorn. Who's your calf, Willie? Marshmallow. Mmm, not quite the friendliest calf, but we'll see how he go she goes. I feel like it's been a bit of a learning curve this year. We might be a little bit behind on uh, probably most things. <laughs> Calf club's actually next week, so we'll see how we get on. Probably been a bigger learning curve for me. I was never allowed calves when I was little. I was only allowed lambs, because these were too much work. Um, so yeah, I haven't really known what to do. I'm sort of picking up as I go too, but we'll get there. Actually just had one of our horses run, Lauren, and she ran second. She has been spelling, had a race, uh, two weeks ago and she sort of came near last but it was like a short race whereas she's suited to the distance so it was a bit of a training one uh, and yeah she came second today so that is a good note to to end it on so apart from that thanks for watching and we'll see you next time